This Focus on Health segment is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare. Hello and welcome to Focus on Health. I'm Ted Stefaniak. Today we're at the Aurora Medical Center in Oshkosh and we're going to be speaking with gastroenterologist Dr. Jeff Goldman. Now if you have acid reflux or you know somebody who does, you're going to want to pay special attention because left untreated, it could lead to much more serious problems. Good to see you once again, Dr. Goldman. Uh, Thank you. Nice let's, to be here. let's talk a little bit about Barrett's esophagus. I think a lot of people understand what acid reflux is, but one of the problems that can come along with acid reflux is Barrett's esophagus. That's correct. And basically, Barrett's esophagus um, is a condition that can occur both in men and women, although it does seem to statistically be more common in middle-aged males. And um, basically what it entails is chronic acid reflux over a period generally of many years uh, that um, backs up into the esophagus. And basically the, the body through more or less an adaptive response uh, converts the lining of the esophagus uh, into a stomach lining. So that's basically what Barrett's esophagus is. And it can be very short segments as well as long segments. The diagnosis of Barrett's esophagus, because it's absolutely silent conditions, you don't feel it, there the really are, are no other symptoms other than your reflux symptoms, and, uh, and some patients have absolutely no symptoms, they're silent refluxers, so you can, can have it and not even be aware of it. So really the best way and really the only way that you can diagnose this confidently is to perform an endoscopy, that is a, an outpatient procedure that um, uh, requires um, uh, intravenous sedation it takes perhaps 15 or 20 minutes and it involves uh, just lying on your left side while you're being monitored um, using a flexible uh, endoscope to uh, examine the esophagus uh, while you're sedated and then basically what you come across is, um, is lining of the esophagus that looks like stomach lining and that's the Barrett's esophagus and then you can do biopsies take tissue samples and uh, that's just superficial samples of that uh, lining and that will confirm uh, under the microscope that this is a Barrett's esophagus. And what is the biggest danger of a uh, Barrett's esophagus? Well the, uh, the danger that uh, we all fear is that it can develop into esophageal cancer and this is a, um, it's a somewhat uh, rare but, um, but not unusual uh, type of cancer. It can be very aggressive uh, when it's diagnosed and then the idea is to uh, follow patients who have Barrett's esophagus and then re-biopsy this area periodically what they call surveillance endoscopy and you look for signs of what they call precancer changes called dysplasia and it can be graded into high grade or low grade uh, but uh, be that as it may once you find that then you probably need to treat that and prior um, to the past several years, um, the recommendations were to, if you found these precancer changes or you found esophageal cancer, it would involve removing a segment of the esophagus, what they call esophagectomy. But now we have techniques that this can be treated endoscopically through the scope. Is there a way for a person to avoid getting Barrett's esophagus? Well, I, I think um, certainly what you want to do is um, if you have gastroesophageal reflux disease, uh, and that is basically reflux symptoms that occur at least uh, two or more times a week that you should not ignore those symptoms and you should get treatment for that. And, and how about our diet? Can we, can we try to cut down on, on the risk of this by, by just changing our diets? Well, not, uh, you know, diet certainly is very helpful. You can avoid certain types of foods, uh, fatty foods, spicy foods sometimes bother uh, patients, uh, things that are acidic, uh, like tomato-based products, things like that, um, uh, caffeine, uh, alcohol. Uh, you want to keep your weight to a, um, uh, a moderate uh, weight. And, and uh, if you're overweight, try to lose some weight. There are studies that show that uh, weight loss can also reduce uh, symptoms of acid reflux uh, considerably. Yeah. So, what would be the treatment if we do end up with uh, Barrett's esophagus? Well, one, um, of the treatments that is available is a procedure called a HALO kind of procedure that we can talk about uh, briefly. And basically this is a procedure whereby uh, you can go in again with the flexible scope and, um, and then basically um, you apply a um, current, a radio frequency current that heats the tissue and, and basically uh, ablates or destroys the, the tissue, the inner lining where the Barrett's is, and then as it heals, it heals with a normal esophageal lining. 
and um, you do this primarily for the uh, when you find the dysplasia, the precancerous changes. Uh, we also have the ability, if we find what looks like a polyp, the precancerous changes uh, in the uh, in the lining. Uh, of the Barrett's esophagus, we can actually remove that uh, during the endoscopic procedure, and then you can use the this HALO procedure to treat the uh, the remainder of the Barrett's uh, uh, esophagus. So the HALO procedure, very briefly, involves, um, and you can put this in uh, adjacent to the scope, and it, if the entire circumference. Um, the lumen of the esophagus is involved, then you can use what they call the 360 degree uh, device uh, that goes in and then this supplies cautery uh, at a specified and um, monitored temperature and then uh, it, it heats up the tissue and gets rid of the, the Barrett's esophagus. Sometimes it has to be retreated within a period of uh, two or three months and then you can also go back and then if there, as it heals, if you have other patches of the Barrett's, then you can actually treat the small patches uh, with what they call a 90 degree um, device. Right. So, and this is a special procedure that, that uh, not very many people do around this in this area. That's, that's correct. And, and if a person, you said it's kind of silent, you're not sure, if, you're not going to really know if you're going to have Barrett's esophagus, at what point should a person seek out uh, your assistance? Well, if they, um, if they have chronic acid reflux, if you've had it particularly for several years, and uh, if you've had treatment that um, perhaps is breaking through and you're, you're having symptoms despite your treatment, then um, certainly um, you should should seek treatment for that. And then if certainly if you're a middle-aged male who's had acid reflux symptoms for several years, uh, five years at least or longer, then you should consider at least being screened, having a screening endoscopy, you know, to check you for Barrett's. All right, Dr. Goldman, great advice. Thank you once again. Thank you. My pleasure. If you have any questions regarding acid reflux or Barrett's esophagus, you can call Dr. Goldman here at the Aurora Medical Center in Oshkosh at 303. 8700. I'm Ted Stefaniak and we'll see you next time on Focus on Health. This Focus on Health segment has been brought to you by Aurora Healthcare.